In this lecture, we'll introduce the use of the onboard timers, particularly timer zero and timer one. We will very briefly touch on the watchdog timer, but that will be covered in a future lecture. So, in previous lectures, we have learned about the timing of commands, and we've actually written our own delay loop, and that is nice to be sure we understand exactly how the timing works, but it is fairly wasteful in that uh, just writing code that's set to delay precludes us from being able to do really anything else in the code other than just sitting there and waiting for a specified period of time. And the good news is the PIC microcontroller has built-in functions that can actually do timing for us. So you can continue doing uh, other operations after you set up the timer, and then you can set up interrupts to handle when your timer overflows or your time that you have set up has elapsed. So these can actually be used for two different purposes. You can either use them as a counter, and so you can set a counter to start at a certain value and wait until you have a certain number of events coming in, a certain number of rising or falling edge transitions, or you can configure your timer to be based upon the clock coming from the oscillator. So if you use it in counter mode, it counts the number of rising or falling edges on a particular pin on the pick and it keeps track of how many times it has seen those edges in the timer register. You can actually prescale that up or down. So you could say, well, only count every two or four or things like that. And you can actually set an interrupt for when that overflow happens. Timers work basically the same way, except instead of waiting for an external pin's input to, be, uh, to come into the pick, in this case, you're going to use the clock cycles, and so it'll count based on how many clock cycles has, have elapsed. And you can actually scale down from uh, once every cycle all the way up to once every 256 clock cycles. So if you want your timer to run slower, then you increase the number of clock cycles per count. If you want it to run faster, then you decrease that. And you can also set up an interrupt here on your timer so that when it overflows, um, it will cause an interrupt to be executed, and then you can have the interrupt service routine handle that. So a brief overview of what you have with timer zero. Timer zero is an 8-bit timer, so it can count uh, from zero through FF and then overflow back to zero, at which point if you have the interrupt configured, it will trigger that particular interrupt. And you can choose your clock source as either the oscillator clock or T0CKI, which happens to be the same pin as port A bit 4, and that's if you're using this as a counter for external events. You would connect um, a push button or whatever sensor to the T0CKI input and of course, if you do that, then RA4 can't be used for any other purpose. You have a 3-bit prescaler, which can be configured to allow you to have it count either faster or slower, depending upon the frequency of the oscillator, or you can only count every so many of the inputs on the T0CKI. And in IntCon, you can set up the timer zero interrupt, as we briefly mentioned in the last lecture on interrupts. If you look into the data sheet in section 5, you'll see a lot more information about timer 0. So, there are several registers associated with timer 0. The TMR0 register is where the actual count is held. And so, you could start that out at 0, and then as you get um, a certain number of clock inputs, or a certain number of oscillations of the oscillator, then you could just increment that every time until it overflows, at which case you will trip the interrupt. And the intcon register is associated with any of the interrupts, so of course if you want to use the timer zero interrupt, 
you will need to set the GIE bit and you will also need to for timer 0 make sure the timer 0 interrupt is enabled and you might also want to clear the flag just as good programming practice um, when you first initialize timer 0 interrupt the option register is also associated with this so the T0CS bit selects whether you want external inputs or the instruction clock to be driving your timer the T0SE uh, determines whether it triggers on a falling edge or a rising edge and then you have several other bits based upon the prescaler PSA determines whether the prescaler is used to go to the watchdog timer or to timer zero we'll talk about the watchdog timer later and your prescaler is actually in PS0 through PS2 here are the three bits of the prescaler that show how you can use that and so if you look in the middle column if you want as fast as one to two that is um, counting every two oscillations of the um, the main system clock oscillator then you put in a bit value of zero 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 if you want to only count once every 256 cycles of that clock you would put in one 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 and you see all of the corresponding other ratios that are available and similarly you have some other ratios when you're using the watchdog timer which again we'll talk about later so here's a summary of the registers that are associated with timer zero the TMR zero register counts uh, or keeps track of the count for the timer intcon keeps track of when there are interrupts so if you want to use the timer zero interrupt you would have the GIE bit set you would have the T0 IE that would enable the timer zero interrupt and then when that interrupt does trigger you could check the flag and it will be found in bit 2 at T0IF the peripheral interrupt enable could also be set if you wanted to use some of the other timers that are on the chip so if you're just using timer 0 you may not need that but if you're also using timer 1 you may want to set or you will want to set PEIE in order to access the peripheral interrupts associated with there and then the option register has all those different things in terms of the prescaler, in terms of whether you're choosing external or internal, and whether you're looking at rising or falling edge. And then, of course, if you are going to be using that external input, then Tris A bit 4 ought to be set as a 1 so that that would be an input. Here's the block diagram of how this works in hardware. So you can see several multiplexers in there if you're using the external input that is on this pin here and then that's coming in through this exclusive OR gate and you're exclusive ORing it with the T0SE which determines whether it should be rising or falling edge and then here the T0CS is what's choosing the clock source so it's either choosing from this external or it's choosing from the oscillator and in this case the oscillator is already divided down by four before it comes in there and then the output from this multiplexer gets sent to a couple different places and so over here you have another multiplexer with the PSA determining whether this is going to uh, your timer zero or whether it's going to the watchdog timer but again we use the same register for uh, timer zero as we do for the watchdog timer in that particular case down here we've got our prescaler determining whether we are going to be using a prescaled version or just the direct version of our oscillator right there so we have that 8-bit prescaler that can slow things down and then over here we have some of the watchdog timer here's your internal oscillator that determines how fast some of these counters go and then here's the watchdog timer coming out so the watchdog timer and timer zero are highly related timer one works very similarly to timer zero in all the interrupts there are peripheral interrupts and so if you wanted to use an interrupt for timer one you can do that 
The main difference between timer 0 and timer 1 is that timer 1 is a 16-bit uh, counter slash timer. And so instead of just the TMR0, it actually has TMR1H for the high byte and TMR1L for the low byte. And so it can keep a counter up to 16 bits. This is nice if you want to have a, a larger counter than can fit in 8 bits or if you want it to run um, quite a bit slower in terms of waiting for that timer to overflow. And again, this can either operate in timer mode or counter mode. If it's in counter mode, the external signal can come in on T1CKI. That's the input for the timer 1 uh, clock, if you choose that. And this does have a 2-bit prescaler, and it can be interrupted when you go from FFFF and roll over back to 0. And so if you choose that, um, you can look into PIE1 as one of your peripheral interrupt registers, and that will be where you will configure it to enable that. Obviously, in INTCON, if you want any interrupts working, you need the GIE bit set. So if you want to read more about Timer 1, I suggest you read through Section 6, which begins on page 57 in the data sheet. And so here's a basic summary of your Timer 1 registers. And so you've got an INTCON, the enabling of uh, all global interrupts, that's bit 7. And then bit 6 is if you're enabling the peripheral interrupts. And then the PIE is where in bit 0 you can enable the timer 1 interrupt. In the PIR1, that's where the flag is going to be for the timer 1 interrupt. So if you do have an interrupt, that bit will be uh, set right there. And then TMR1H and TMR1L are where the actual counter of the timers are held and so you can see them coming in there and then you've got several of your configuration bits uh, for the timer one in T1 cons so you can configure it in terms of how you want it to operate there and you can read more about those bits in the data sheet so this is what we just said just to summarize the TMR1H and TMR1L are the high and low bytes respectively that keep track of the current count You've got uh, several bits associated with an interrupt. If you want to enable the interrupt, if you want to check the flag, and then obviously you're using a peripheral interrupt. And so interrupts in general, you would need the GIE bit set. And if you're using any of the peripheral interrupts, the PEIE needs to be set as well. You've got prescalers on there, and then you can enable the oscillator with the T10S or T10OSE. EN. That enables the oscillator to be configured with the timer 1. And then your TMR1CS determines whether your clock source is either the external clock, your oscillator clock, or some internal counter. And TMR1 on enables timer 1. It just turns it on. And so here's the basic block diagram there. Your oscillator is coming in here if you choose that. Um, and then down here you have a gate which can uh, basically determine this is an external pin which can determine uh, whether this is running or not. Up here you've got your enable bits. Here is your two byte counter. And so notice your clock is coming in here. And so that can either come in, here's another Schmidt trigger. Um, so you have a Schmidt trigger based upon pressing buttons here, or if you choose down here, your clock can come in from the frequency of the oscillator, the crystal oscillator, and then you got this prescaler to divide it down by 1, 2, 4, or 8. And then this can come back into here, into this multiplexer to be selected as the clock source over here as we're counting. So timer 2 is also available. Um, I'm not going to get into too much detail about timer 2, but it works very similarly, and you can read up more about that in the data sheet. So in general, timers are used if you want code to run for a specified amount of time, and so you can set up prescalers to allow it to overflow at just the right time.
and trigger the interrupt based upon um, some basic math of where that counter needs to start and where how long it needs to take before it overflows. So you can set the prescaler accordingly for how slow or how fast you need those timers to run and you can initialize TMR0. You could either clear it or you can set it to a particular value that will cause it to overflow sooner if you need a shorter timing cycle. You can have interrupts for timer zero and then inside of the interrupt service routine you'll want to check which flag is set particularly if you're choosing to use more than one timer.